Then I come to the greens. Now, people often say that the greens are watermelons. Red on the inside and green on the outside. But that there are, we know, we know, we know, we, we understand there are, well I understood there were two green factions. There was the, the green, green faction, uh, Jeremy Buckingham and others who were interested in, in conservation issues. Uh, there were the red-green faction that, that, uh, around Senator Lee Rhiannon uh, that are more interested in, uh, in uh, Marxist pursuits but use the cuddly nature of green conservatism as a, as a cloak. But in fact now we've discovered today that there are three types of greens. You've got your green-greens, you've got your red-greens, and you've got your anarchists. You've got your black-greens. And that's what we've seen on display today. Black-greens. Black-greens opposed to a responsible clarification of police powers. What we heard today from the member from Newtown is nothing more, is nothing more than an ideological hatred of the men and women who protect us every day of the week and put their lives on the line. Let's just let's just analyse. Let's just analyse uh, yeah, what what the points were that the member from Newtown uh, came up with. Civil liberties. Civil liberties. Yeah, tell, tell that to the victims of terrorist act, yeah, what is happening to their civil liberties uh, when they have a gun at their head. You know, what, this, this is a party that would prefer the civil liberties of terrorists to the civil liberties of the mass of the Australian population. Then she talks about multiculturalism. You know, multiculturalism and community cohesion is enhanced if the whole community is satisfied that the police are there to protect them and have satisfactory powers to protect them. That includes minority groups like Muslims who can be satisfied that if the unthinkable happened outside a mosque, police have the necessary power to deal with an anti-Islamic terrorist. So this is not picking on minority groups. This is not undermining social cohesion. This is a bill to enhance social cohesion. So whatever your faith, Whatever your lack of faith, whatever your political belief, whatever your, your affiliations, you can be satisfied that if you are the victim of a terrorist incident, the police will have satisfactory powers to deal with it. Now, the member of Newtown then raised the question of, uh, well, who, who could the police shoot? The police could shoot anybody, because, uh, so she says. But when you look at the bill, you'll see that it focuses on the purpose for which force may be used, which is to, f to defend to defend threatened purpose, persons. It doesn't focus on terrorist offenders as the object of that force. It's preferable for the police to use force for the defence of persons rather than for deliberately targeting an offender. The bill, the bill adopts the same test, the same test for the use of force as is already used in section 418 of the Crimes Act for self-defence, including the defence of others. So it is a test that is familiar to the police familiar to the courts. And it's a test that requires an assessment of proportionality. Uh, you know, when a declaration is made, the only force, including lethal force, that is required, is, is authorised, uh, is that which is reasonably necessary. Um, so, you know, so if there's a, a granny walking by who happens to be in the area, it's hardly reasonably necessary to use lethal force against uh, some innocent bystander. So this is a familiar test and uh, uh, that is why Section 24B is worded as it is. Uh, currently, under 418 of the Crimes Act, self-defence is available when the person believes that the use of force was necessary in order to defend themselves or others and the person believes that what he or she did was a reasonable response in the circumstances as he or she perceived them to be. So these provisions will ensure the police can act to ensure that the threat to safety of the community is, um, is removed. The member for Newtown then raised the question of uh, what was, as I understood it, said to be a lack of oversight of police powers, police officers using force when a declaration is made. Um, well, let's just look at what oversight there will be. There will be the coroner who will have the power to hold an inquest after violent and unnatural deaths, that power remains in place. Where a person dies as a result of or in the course of police operations, the coroner will continue to have the jurisdiction and will therefore continue to be, be required to hold an inquest. 
the coroner will continue to have the ability to make recommendations which can be directed at public safety. This is an important safeguard to ensure that a, there is a proper investigation following a death. This ensures the coroner will continue to protect lives and the well-being of our community through the coroner's ability to bring to the notice of relevant authorities practices, policies and laws which may need to be changed. The Law Enforcement Conduct Commission, which commences operation on 1 July 2017, has been given specific responsibility to oversight critical incident investigations conducted by the New South Wales Police Force. Critical incident investigations are conducted whenever a death or serious injury arises from a police operation. The Law Enforcement Conduct Commission will be notified when a critical, critical incident is declared and will be able to monitor all stages of the investigation. The Law Enforcement Conduct Commission will be able to attend to the scene of a critical incident, to view recordings or transcripts of witnesses, uh, witness interviews and to liaise with senior investigators. If any issues with the conduct of a critical incident investigation are identified, the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission will be able so again, to bring this to the attention of the Commissioner of Police and, where applicable, the coroner. And then there's the question of judicial review. Uh, if it transpires that a declaration has been made invalidly, um, the effect of section 24B, uh, subsection 4, sorry, subsection 5, will be that uh, subsection 2 continues so that police uh, who have acted in good faith are appropriately excused from criminal liability. But it, it, it is implicit in the language of 24B that a declaration uh, is still subject to <coughs> judicial review by the court on traditional administrative law grounds and could be set aside. So there, is that, there are three, in three layers of oversight. There's the coroner, there's the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission, uh, and there are the courts. So uh, I, think, um, I thank all members uh, for their contribution to this debate. Um, I record my absolute astonishment, my absolute astonishment and disappointment that the Greens uh, could not support this bill and put public safety first. This is not some hairy-chested, right-wing, uh, macho conservative bill. This is a responsible, measured bill with appropriate oversight, uh, with appropriate qualifications, with appropriate procedural requirements, with appropriate... All right. Well, the member for Newtown says, why is it being rushed through today? Imagine. Imagine. Imagine if the unthinkable happened. Imagine if the unthinkable happened, and there were another terrorist, another terrorist episode here, and snipers couldn't decide whether they could take out a terrorist. And the member, the member, the member for Newtown would say, "What about his human rights? What about his human rights?" Well, that may work. That may work in the black-green faction of the Greens, but it doesn't work for the people of New South Wales. And I commend the bill to the House. Thank you. The question is that the bill be read a second time or